You're listening to Catalyst Church World Harvest Ministry Podcast, transforming lives and influencing the marketplace, campus, community, and the next generation. We would like to welcome our guests, our VIPs today. This is your first, second, third, or fourth time. Okay, kawai kawai naman dyan. Let's welcome them at Islam Pakpakan this morning. And uh, so good to have you with us. How many of you this morning are expecting to hear perhaps an encouragement or perhaps you know, want to hear from the Lord? Well, I believe every time we gather as a church, we're in the right place because when we speak about God's Word, you know, He uses the message to really minister to us. So, abrihan na totong kasing-kasing. Amen? Hindi naman tapad, abrihan mo kasing-kasing. As we pray, Father, we trust to you this time. like to honor, acknowledge your presence in our midst. Lord, I pray that we will not just be informed, but transformed. That Lord God, we will receive your word. So our hearts are open before you. Speak to us, minister to us. Most of all, change us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, I have understood that uh, when we are hearing a message, a sermon, it's good to laugh. Amen. But it's not when we are laughing, it's not when we are somewhat amused or siguro nalingaw ta, that matters. When we listen to a sermon, sometimes it breaks our hearts, makes us sad. In other words, na convicted ta. God never condemns us, but He brings conviction. And uh, there are times we could cry, there are times, you know, it's a bit serious, and so it's in the face. But however serious, however in the face ang sa sahi, but if it, did, if it is not lived on a daily basis, wala na to kialaw, mo transform sa to ang bali wala ragnado. Amen? So it's good that we can agree on those things. Now, last week, you know, we talked about being daring to enter a promised land. How many of you this week, my mm. plan no more, the past week, in kung, I will be daring? Huh? How many of you have dreams? Yes. What did you do about it? Now, we have risks, but are we willing to dare, enter those risks, con- conquer them? Because we know God is with us. It's very important that we understand you know, that it is only by the power of God. And then as we are winning, as we conquer things, we share it with others. We talked about that. So we say, I dare you. This morning, today, let's open our eyes and wake ourselves up so we will not miss our promised land. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Last week it was, I dare you. Today, let's challenge one another. Wake up! Let me ask you a question. Have you been in a position or in a, in an experience that you missed your flight? At one point, I went to the airport, was there early in the morning. Yeah. And then yeah. <laughs> I was there and uh, checked in, obviously. I said, Sir, something's wrong. I thought I missed my flight. And the flight, the, the, the uh, woman said, Sir, this flight is not in the morning, it's in the afternoon. <laughs> I did not miss my flight. But it's, uh, I don't know how it feels, mabiaan ka sa biyahe. It's like you miss something. You miss your flight. It can be costly. Right? It can be costly. My wife recently experienced that. It was a, a costly mistake. Di ba, babe? Yeah. It was really costly. Uh, there was so much traffic at the time. She was coming from Manila to Cebu. She missed the flight. We don't want to miss God's blessing. Amen. We don't want to miss. It's our turn to enter the promised land, but we missed it because we were sleeping. Therefore, the challenge today is wake up. Again, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> some people miss their flights. Some people miss the bus. Some people 
catch the wrong bus. Amen. Sa iyo nga bus na nasakyan. Nanay mo tapos sa gisakyan na na. But some people fall asleep and fail to get off the bus. Remember story you might have heard sa kabas na gabiyahe. And uh, after traveling for about 10 minutes, para, para, para. Ano man, yun ang konduktor. Eh, hiungke ko. So, sige, para. Then another 15 minutes, para, para, para. Another passenger. Sa so, problema, hiungke ko. Di na kumpungan. So, sige, hunong, hunong, hunong. It became so irritable because every 15 minutes, para, para, muso ka! Ito, 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 kabuhin ko, snubil! So, ano? Ingo ng konduktor sa inkasun ko, napagali mo para sunod, ha? Pusilun ako! It was pusil. Ito naman tayo, ito, aromas na. Konduktor ka. Atood man! Atood, atood. Konduktor, konduktor! Muso man! Para, hanggang! Turaan mo ah, ay... Turaan mo ah... Ano yung tapat? Turaan mo ah... Mahit po na isi ha? But there are times we miss the bus stop because nakatulog pa. So, it's a bit you know, uh, intense in a way <clears throat> because the message this morning will I pray not just encourage us but really transform us make us understand that in these last days a lot of people including Christians are sleeping instead of inter entering their promised land they missed it because they're already there. It's the Kairos moment. Kairos meaning the opportune time for blessing. An opportune time for God's intervention. But na miss lang yun. We are in the last days. Immorality is rising. The lines between what is right and wrong gets blurry. We are in the last days, obviously. This world has become lawless every single day. Truth is becoming relative. And we don't, you know, in this season, we're in, there are differing religions, differing views. And as much as some people condemn because of practices of others, they worship idols and you know, they would even post on FB and I saw there's no difference when they worship the golden calf and then they're lifting this up or something like that. But when I saw the negative comments of people who were bashing this and that, I've come to realize that true enough, what wins the world is not a war on words, but rather we win by love. Yeah. We cannot win anybody by argument. We cannot win any arguments. As a matter of fact, you may win an argument, but you will lose a relationship. And there was a comment that says, Obviously, respeto ha ita. Respeto na kanyang religion. Respeto ha mong religion. There's those comments because these comments are coming from, you know, hearts that are so intent on their belief. So in a sense, yes, we respect the belief. But the truth is, the thing is, we no longer follow what is the Bible, what the Bible is saying about the truth, but we don't have the right no, na, to shove it on their throat and bash them with the Bible and say, Monik is not the Bible. We don't have that right. It's only God that can convict hearts. What we need to be doing is ayaw iluga ang buko share something that is substantial and they will leave the old ways behind. We all have been at some point not worshipping the Lord. And so, the appeal of God upon us is to share the truth with love. We don't bash. We share the truth with love. Yeah. We who claim to know the truth. And it's been said, no, we always even caught it. Religion, religion. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. I understand that. The ironic thing is, even people 
who don't have a relationship with God will cut the same line towards Christians. Ignore naman Christians. It's not about religion. It's about relationship anyhow. But what they are missing, and we know it, a lot of people claim to have a relationship with God. We are all in agreement. It's not Jesus did not come to introduce a religion. Wala na ipaklaro sa toa. Jesus did not come that, you know, Catholic Church is the way, or Living Word is the way, or City Church is the way, or any other church for that matter in Cebu, or in the Philippines, in the whole world. Churches are ecclesias. They are God's community. There's only one church. And that is the church that is founded on the truth, not Peter. Peter meaning the rock, not the apostle Peter, so to speak. And so there are a lot of discussions, debates about that. But Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But the church is building is not this. We are part of the church. The church is building is not a single entity. The church is building is not a religion. The church that he is building is a church that is founded on the truth. Kanang simbahan, ingon pa nga, mausab ang kinabuhi, kanang simbahan, at a church that believes that Jesus Christ is indeed Savior. And not only Savior, but Jesus is also Lord. Yeah. And so when people flippantly say, it's not about religion, it's about relationship, but the truth is, are they in relationship with Jesus Christ? Because if they are indeed in relationship with Jesus Christ, they will heed to His words. And Jesus' word says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to heaven except me. So they are contradicting themselves. But they don't see that. Sometimes kita, we don't see that. Because we are so enamored by our beliefs. So we don't fight for our beliefs. We fight for what is true. So happen, we believe the Bible, and the Bible is true. Moron na itong foundation. Amen? But I understand we are in the last days and so I caught this verse, this parable from Jesus. He spoke this parable to them then and I believe he continues to speak to us now. parable Because through this parable, it should not be mistaken. Uh, uh, we should not mistaken relationship with companionship. Matthew chapter 25, in verse 1, Matthew 25, it says there, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps, went to meet the bridegroom. In my bridesmaids, was a bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The context has always been Jesus trying to make a story a parable to convey a message to the people. There were ten bridesmaids who we can consider as those who may untanga nito o sa ginoo, may untanga Christian. But there are distinctions because it's very easy to say I am a Christian. It's very easy to say I am born again, even I'm a believer of the Lord. I belong to Catholic Church. It's very easy to claim that you are godly. It's very easy to claim that you are part of this community of the saved or whatever. You see, don't miss the bus by sleeping. Or nonetheless, don't ride the wrong bus. A lot of people are riding a bus, pero ang dadon sa iya, opposite sa iyang gustong pagadadon. If you want to have a relationship with God, don't get into a bus that will bring you out of a relationship with God. It's very important to know. And so there were 10 who believe they are on a, on a bus, on the right bus, going to a direction to meet the, bra, the, the groom, right? To meet the groom, and, and the, the bridegroom rather. So it's, it's very important that we understand this. Five of them were foolish, Molani and distinction, five of them were wise. The five who were foolish did not take enough olive oil for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. 
Tawa yung tapat ug nagdaba nag extra. Verse 5 When the bridegroom was delayed they all became drowsy and fell asleep. I mentioned at some point dreams gets delayed. Our aspirations gets delayed. Expectations gets delayed. Perhaps promotion gets delayed. Isa rin dugay na nagpaabot. She, he, is taking a long time to come. Asa naman siya? Tingnan na kung papa, nag-graduate lang ko. Ano mga babae na, aral na. Karoon nag-graduate na ko. Asa naman sila? And so, there can be delays to our promotion. There can be delays to to our expectations, the hope. But the question is, are you keeping yourself awake so that when those dreams are in the face, so that when those opportunities are in the face, you will not miss it? Are you keeping yourself awake so when God pours out His blessings, nagmata ka? Kung ano yung mga katibulangan, di ba? Mata o sayo, kaya kung nag-ulan pa o kwarta, na to kawa kay mapupo. Ang mga pinasupo, may ngog. Kung nag-ulan pag bangkaw, kamuray na ego. <laughs> Asa mga kasaduhan. What are you expecting? Bangkaw or kwarta? <laughs> Our folks, as a good intention, matatag sayo. But there's so much truth in understanding we need to be awake. We cannot miss the bus. We cannot miss our year of salvation. Yes. We cannot be sleeping this year because there's so many things God wants you to do for the kingdom, for your family. There's a last in store for you. Wala lang ka. Kung magpatulog-tulog ka, wag ka kita, wag ka kabalo. A lot of us are so, are so caught up with our little mindset, little world, fears, worries. Caught up with the things of this world. Caught up with so much pain in our hearts. We could not let go. Let go na. Ipuli ka batig na ho. True love to ila. Amen. We could not seem to get past our past hurdle tungod lang kay nasakitan ta. Tignan mong tapad, wake up. And so, nakatulog sila. In verse 6, at midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming! Come out and meet him! All the bridesmaids got up, prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Tagay, tagamay ng lana diha, because our lamps are going out. Please give us some of your oil. Give us some of it. Because they were not wise enough to bring extra. In verse 9, the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. The door was locked. The marriage feast signifies God's presence, God's blessings, God's promotion, God's anointing, the next level, whatever good and every good and perfect gift comes from above. He wants to invite us into this marriage feast. It also talks about when we get to heaven. talks about when we share the blessings with God. We don't want to miss that. Diba? We don't want to miss that. Kung naiit ulyo ka, mag-abri ka alas noibi, alas ut, sumidya pa lang to anak na. We don't want to miss a buffet. We don't want to miss a good treat. We don't want to miss our date 
because it's very important. We understand importante siya. We don't want to miss it. But these five foolish bridesmaids missed the occasion. The door was locked. In verse 11, later, when the other five bridesmaids, pagbalik nila, they stood outside and they called out, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. And this reminds me of Matthew 7, 21 following, wherein people were saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Lord, Lord, did we not perform these signs and wonders? Lord, di ba Lord, ganong nagkawas, ganong wakman may kasunod? And Jesus said, depart from me, you doer of iniquity. It's very intense when God deals with us. But he could not be blamed. He knows our hearts anyway. He knows our motivations. He knows our intentions. So they were locked outside. They were calling, open the door for us. You know what he said? Jesus said, but he called back, believe me, I don't know you. And then Jesus served a stern warning in verse 13. So you too must keep watch. For you do not know the day or hour of my return. One more time, tell the person next to you, wake up. Amen? Pagmatata. Portante kayo, Santa Nato, there is a promised land. We've heard from the Lord, we need to be daring. Dream unto some. We must dare. We rest in the power of God. But as well as today, God is serving a wake up call for us. Church, wake up! Wake up! Never miss God's presence for God's blessings. The problem is, Sahai, we get caught up with the blessings. Wala na nato na enjoy ang naghatag sa to blessings which is ang presence sa gino. Never seek His hand, rather seek His face. A lot of people, we always ask for God's blessings, hand upon us favor upon us. I do that. I ask for His hand. But before we ask for His hand, first and foremost, we seek His face. The will of God. Because when you seek His face, my parents, my mga bata, oh, tagay ko ani, tagay ko ani. There is still automatic. Ang kamot na palihukon. Automatic ang mabless. Diba mga parents? Mga parents rin. Parang may sabok, mm, chocolate, aslak baba. Diba? Sa hilo mga bata. So, inana lang sometimes. But I love it when kids would grab your face and want to speak to you. Mama, Papa. It's, there's a special, no, okay, that's a special occasion when you look at your son, your child, you know, eye to eye, what do you have? And then you listen. And that's what God wants from us. He does not want us to be just seeking His hand. Obviously, the hand is automatic when we have His attention. When we grab hold of Him and say, God, please, I don't want your blessing. I want your presence. I don't want your hand. I want your face. It's very important that we be Away. We never chase success, but we'd rather we chase God's will. We never employ a strategy, but rather we deploy an idea from the Lord. As I have said before in a series that we mentioned, it's very important that we act upon a God-given idea. It's not about our career. It's not about our strategy nor our brilliance. The question is, whose idea are you pursuing? Or rather, that idea, is it coming from the Lord? So, there's so much benefits of seeing. And from that parable, we challenge ourselves. If we are to embrace our year of salvation, it requires that we wake up. Number one, it's very important. In verse 6, at midnight they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. <coughs> Very important. A lot of people, 
you know, they want to be rich or they want to, of course, my blessing. But they're not watching for opportunities. Much more, they are not praying. I've realized, you know, in engaging in business, engaging in whatever means that we can have, you know, I've realized that Ingan Panila, it's not biblical, but they say chance favors the prepared mind. A lot of businessmen, they're always looking out for opportunities. For me, mm. I'm always looking out for God-given ideas. Mm. There can, there can be many opportunities in the world. There can be many instances to get rich. Some get rich quick schemes, some Ponzi schemes, some this and that. We must be very careful because the objective is not to be rich. The objective is to be a blessing. Amen. Make sure that the blessing that God gives us is sustainable. Because kung gikan sa gino, it's sustainable, it will overflow. Dili lang sa mga kalingon, kung dili sa mga taong palibot na to. Say Amen. Amen. Watch and pray. This is the reason why Jesus, or God, you know, sent 12 spies to explore the land. Tanawa. Watch the opportunities. Also, notice that there are risks, there are giants. But Watch. God wants to convince us. You cannot get into your promised land kung magpatulog-tulog ka. No? If you need to get to some somewhere, if you need to get to somewhere, you need to know ahead of time what route to take. Tomorrow, about 4 a.m., we leave Cebu and we go Pugasa may patulog. I haven't looked the uh, that's the itinerary yet, although it was posted, but we're going to be having our strategic meeting, Psalm 78, 72 Network. And uh, now that it's near, and that's how sometimes I work, so may na lang na si Waze, Waze Waze Waze. 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 So we have to leave by 4 a.m. In, in order to get at some point by this, and then we'll travel, etc., etc. We're going to Negros. And um, we have, I have to plot it. Tinanglan ako makita. I have to see. Otherwise, kasi negro si Padalong, ako kong lite. May nalang na si Waze. But for us, we have to navigate by watching and most importantly, praying. Because sometimes it's dark at midnight. They were roused by the shout, The bridegroom is coming. Opportunity sometimes come when we least expect it. Yes. That's very important to know. That's why we must be on a prayer mode 24-7. Yes. It does not mean that ampo ta 24-7. Wala tayo mabuhat. It means in everything we do, every time we do, encounter, every time we encounter a problem, every time we encounter a blessing, we pray, we praise the Lord. When there's a problem, we praise the Lord. We tell God, Lord, intervene in my situation. Be watchful of the Lord. Be sensitive to His presence. Look to God's will. Look to God's idea. This is what will bring you to promised land. Wake up. Watch and pray. Don't just rush into things just because it's a green. Sometimes it's a green, but it was the devil who flicked the switch. Make sure it is God who flicked the switch. Because even closed doors, kung ang gino may mag no man can shut it. No man can shut it. And if it's a closed door, sometimes, no, open door, sometimes daily day, ang gino may nagpasunod. There's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to death. That's why we need to be watching and praying. Doug have opportunities. I'm telling you, if you open your eyes, Doug have opportunities. But if you're just watching and not praying, it will be the wrong bus. Wrong bus. Sayup, yung masakyan. Kagag bus mong labay ha. Pumunta na, maklaro ba ni mo, badong na konsulasyon. Diba si Sakairo Kadritso, pwede na ako kundi maglasis sa labhan na. Ayan na, doon lang kayo, ayan mo. Ayan na. Ay, bala, bala. Ayan na. Babay na. 
Diba? So, kung inana ang kondisyon sa inyong mata, siguro, magdamog sa muan. Kaya rin yun sa muan. Watch and pray. It's very important to watch and pray. Look to God's will. Look to God's idea. Don't just be brilliant in your mind. Be brilliant in your soul, in your spirit. Be praying to the Lord. Dili tanan madalag. Aming kamot, panintiil. Importante ang presensya sa ginoo. Yes. And then secondly, we are to embrace our year of salvation. It requires that we watch and pray. Number two, always be passionate for God. Never run out of oil. The five foolish ones ask the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. Ang kadasig di na mahatag. You cultivate it, your relationship di sa ginoong. Of course, pwedeng makapikpik, pwedeng makastorya ang yung mga friends, magdasig sa mga, they can encourage you, whatever. At the end of the day, you have to buy it yourself. You have to cultivate that passion for God. Do not run out of oil. You know what sucks the strength out of us? The joy of serving. This is a picture of five wise and five foolish Christians, that some people can be stuck in the, the, the business, the cares of this world. The world system keeps us so busy. That's why we're seeking so much of God's hand. Pero wala na nato, na miss na nato ang God's face. Therefore, always be passionate for God. Kanang moingon ka nga. Kunin mo nang lahat sa akin. Ayaw lang ang passion para sa gino. It's a passion of God that keeps us burning. If you run out of oil, if you run out of oil, and you try to do God's will, makonsume ka. It's just like a wick, pabilo. Gawa na yung oil. Masunog ang pabilo. We will not last if we are Moving in our own strength, operating in our own anointing, operating in our own wisdom, mahut dan juta. Always be passionate for God. How do we do that? If we are to watch and pray, kinangalan ta mag soak sa presensya sa gino 24 7, watchful, prayerful ta. Passion is also cultivated in the same manner. That always spend quality time diha sa gino. Wake ourselves up. Check ni mo imong kasing-kasing, imong motive, imong heart diha sa Ginoo. Check your mind as a kadagan kasagara sa panahon. And I and, and and we cannot avoid when we're doing something nagdagan ang program sa imong ginabuhat sa imong nahuna bisan pa sa pagkatulog. Pero kapakapini kanunay, hapini kanunay sa presensya sa Ginoo, Lord, ginadala nako ni diha kanimo. Always be passionate for God. People who are passionate for God, never are never on the wrong bus. People who are passionate for God never fall asleep to miss the blessing that God has intended for them. How many here we want God's blessings? We want to enter God's promised land. But this year is going to be a year of salvation para sa inyo. I challenge you. And the challenge is wake up. The challenge is Seek the Lord every single day of, of, of your life. No single person I have ever met who is passionate. They have said, you know, sakto nga passion, ha? Not just passion. There's so many say, passion can be emotion. But passion is not just emotion. It is an intention to commit to what God is saying. You can have all the verses, you can memorize the Psalms and the Proverbs, you can know a lot about Scripture, you can know God's will. But if you're not passionate for God's will, if you're not passionate for God, you will do the opposite of what you have just read. So, Tanti, check na to tong heart. Am I, am I in line? Being passionate with God is, am I in line? If you keep on eating junk food, you will lose your appetite for lunch. How many stick-o's did you eat this morning? 
<laughs> As the person beside you, how many stickers? Ten. Would JB, you ate ten? I know you, you, you won't lose appetite anyhow. <laughs> yeah? Growing adolescent. Some of us, when we're so full of this world, that is the reason we are not passionate for God. Because we're so full of this world. The moment we start to read the Bible, it doesn't somehow connect. The moment we pray, there's a lot of distractions in our minds. The moment we fast, we say, go to man, of course. Because <laughs> we're fasting. We're consecrating our lives. Every time we do some spiritual stuff, it's boring. That's a sign, a telltale sign that passion for God is being sipped away. Let's bring that passion back. How many here will determine today, I'll be away. I'll be watchful. I will watch and pray. I'll keep the passion for God burning in my heart. Walay na alkansike, dasik sa ginoo. Pero daghan na disgrasya sa liyang nawad alkadasik sa ginoo. It grieves my heart every time. Because as we are going away from the presence of God, we're drawing near to a different presence. And our choices, instead of becoming wise, they become dumb choices. At the end of the day, we become self-righteous. At the end of the day, we blame others. At the end of the day, we get bitter. But the single truth is, we have distanced us, ourselves away from the Lord. We have no one to blame but ourselves. That's why, you know, this bridegroom, bridesmaids that were foolish, they know their fault. They ran out of oil. They went to buy, and true enough, when the bridegroom came with the bought some oil, and then the door was locked upon them. When that happens, it is a reminder for us Next point, to always the importance of keeping a clear conscience. Keep a clear conscience. Avoid being locked out. Why is being awake important? Because if the moment we start to live in disobedience to God, it is not God locking us up, we are locking ourselves up. Naaram blessing sa ginoo, but when you live in disobedience, it is you who's going out. Ikaw ang napalayo, ikaw ang nidistansya. Don't keep yourself locked out of God's blessings, of God's presence. In this story, however, they mean well. They want to buy oil. They want to buy it. But blessing comes at the right place, at being at the right place at the right time. A lot of people nagmahay in the end. Why? They could have kept their passion, you know, they could have been watchful and prayerful, but then they got entangled sa pagbuhat ani, pagbuhat ana. And of course, there's remorse. Of course, there's regrets. Of course, there's guilt. And sometimes the devil pushes it out of bounds and they condemn themselves. And let me tell you something. Before that happens, that's why it's very important to keep a clear conscience. If you are convicted in doing something, it's good. That means you have the Spirit of God in you. But if, if there's no longer a thug, if there's no longer a prick in the heart, you're so convinced, sakto na job ko, ano man, and you began to grumble, and began to, you know, fight against the conviction of God, o na siyang delikado, basig nakatulog na ka. The devil is expert. Sama sa storya sa unggoy, on a tree, when there was a strong wind, ang unggoy, wakit na hulog, e perting kapyot, perting uyuguyug, ang unggoy, perting gunit, sa kahoy. Huwag sa wanay bagyo, huwag ang hangin mingunag. 
Nangungoy na katun. <laughs> Ug nahulog. <laughs> Inang tabad, okay lang kaya mo eh. <laughs> It is when we are resting and we're not in a war mode that we engage ourselves in a breezy activity that somehow affects our relationship with the Lord. We know it's sinful. A little fling, a little flick of the channel of a website, a little compromise in our hearts, a little greed, little worry, fear sets in our hearts, and we take them, we invite them in our souls, and we are defiled. See, we could be worse than people dancing in the streets. Worshipping God's idols. Because in our hearts we need to look. We need to understand. A lot of times we are missing God's blessing. Not because God is not giving it to us. But really because and because we have defiled ourselves. That's why we need to keep a clear conscience. Those who had clear conscience... Those who have the oil, the passion, those who are watching and praying, they were able to enter their promised land. We can't blame them. Sa maranag estudyante ka, sa buka na may bright, makikang mag-answer, may jika stubag sa mga pangutan as maestra. Ay, kung answer. Ay, muli ng basulon, nagatuon mo. Yun na na, bitaw na, di ba? Mga assignments. Class dismissed. Mayroon na sa, Ma, may ipas ang assignment. You don't blame. I don't blame you if you're passionate for the Lord. You're watchful. You're prayerful. And God blesses you. I don't blame you. You deserve it. You deserve it. I don't blame you if you keep a clear conscience and God blesses you so much. You tell the Lord, Lord, I blame you for making me bless. I blame you for blessing me. I blame you as the song goes. You are to blame for all the good things that has happened to my life. Kasunti na bamuan na si Gino. Ikaw mahinong da, Lord. Ikaw good. Ano? Kami na karoon. Ikaw mahinong da, Lord. Ikaw good. Ano? Grabe ka pa na lang yun. You are to blame of all the good things. That is supposed to be the only blaming of God that we do. Not blaming Him for some wrong that has happened to our lives because we did something wrong. As a consequence, we don't blame God when we get when we get locked up. It's our responsibility to keep a clear conscience. And when we do have a clear conscience, we won't get locked up. As a matter of fact, God wants to welcome us. But as I close, I understand that uh, some of us could be locked up emotionally somewhere. Some have, you know, maybe not hatred, but discord in their hearts towards someone. You want to get it right, but there's pride in the way. Perhaps you're in a financial, stuck in a financial rut, and, you know, it's because of my past, because I did this, because I did that. How many here you have regrets? I have. How many here you're, 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 you're not right with God in some sense? You have rebelled against Him. How many here you've lost passion? How many here, you've not been praying and so you're always into opportunities that you call opportunities but they are getting you in trouble? There's one last element and that is we can experience genuine repentance. Jesus called out, you know what? Jesus 
called out and said, you know what? If you would only come before me. If you would only wake yourself up. You would experience the promised land. But because you're so sold out, believe me, I don't know you. Lord, Lord. But there's a, a, a twist adding a story. And the twist is we can come to the Lord this morning. Amen. We can wake ourselves up so that we will not be locked up. God does not lock us up. He does not lock anybody who is pursuing Him. So let's allow this, this time for the Lord, the Spirit of God, to wake us up, minister to us. Inyong tapad, watch, wake up, watch and pray. Let's all stand. Let's take this time to just draw near to the Lord. God, we're drawing near to you. Awaken us. I need you, Lord. Maybe this is a time for you. You know, God is reminding us we are supposed to be passionate as a If there are anything in our hearts that needs to be awakened, maybe you're not as prayerful as before. You're not as excited to read your Bible as before. Maybe, you know, energy is drained out of you because of fears and worries and doubts. Maybe some, for you, you think it's a bit, it's a bit too late. Nakahimo lang ang mga sayop and you think there's no longer a chance. You can experience genuine repentance and you can be part of that banquet that God has prepared for you, Lord.
offer our hearts to the Lord this morning. Why don't you just open your mouth and say, God, Lord, if you need to ask for forgiveness, go ahead, go ahead. God is here today to awaken us. He's not scolding us nor condemning us. He wants to wake us up. He does not want you to miss the bus. He doesn't want you to miss his blessings. Come on. Secret. This 
is indeed going to be our year of salvation. The spiritual area, emotional area, financial area, the physical area. The salvation come upon your church. I declare salvation upon your life, upon your family. Wake up. Wake up. Let us wake ourselves up. for listening to Catalyst Church Podcast. For more updates, like us on Facebook at Catalyst Church Cebu or visit our website at catalystchurch.ph.